power rankings are tricky. Power rankings based on the anticipated production and impact of an entire season are even trickier. Nonetheless, I'm going to try to do it anyways. <laughs> What's up everybody, it's JJ Buckets and obviously from the thumbnail, from the title, you can tell that today's video we are going to be power ranking the most important Raptors going into this season and the kind of impact that they might slash should have on the team this year. Now before I fully get into things here, make sure to leave a like on the video. It genuinely helps the algorithm so damn much and I appreciate it every time you folks are doing it. But other than that, for today's video, I thought I would do the power rankings as a top eight. I think when you're going kind of past that, a little weird slash not as interesting. Just I guess the eight based on like the prominent rotation, I guess, uh, makes a little bit of sense. So with that in mind, I am going to go and start with the honorable mentions here, which would be Goran Dragic and Kem Birch. For Kem Birch's case, I mean, obviously, there's a good chance he will be the starting center on night one for the Raptors. But I also think there's a good chance that his role grows smaller and smaller and smaller if other guys around him start to emerge. So that's why I kind of relegated him to an honorable mention. And the other one, Goran Dragic, seems to be positive out of the gate, I guess, in terms of what we've seen in preseason, even though... As you can tell by my last video, I don't like to put a lot of stock into the preseason. Nonetheless, I think Dragic will have an impact on this team for sure, but unless they are lights out come deadline time, I think there's a good chance he's gone around the deadline and it's hard to place him higher on this list when I don't even think he's gonna be here for a tremendously long period of time in the season. I'm gonna try to keep these for the most part to the point and quick because otherwise this video could run like half an hour. Um, <laughs> Nonetheless, at number eight, I'm going to go with Malachi Flynn. Now, there's a small concern in me that says Malachi Flynn might end up in Nick Nurse's doghouse. Um, I don't know, just the feeling I have. But I'm going to go out, I guess, on a small limb here and say that he won't. And I think that he will have a reasonable impact as the bench point guard. You know, kind of, well, not leading the second unit, but obviously leading it as the point guard. Um... Yeah, I think there's a good chance he could play a good role in that, and especially by season's end when somebody like Goran Dragic could potentially be gone. Malachi could really step into an even more prominent role with the team, so I think eight is a fair spot for him. Number seven and six were a little tough to rank, kind of based on some of the things that I talked about earlier in terms of, you know, guys potentially getting traded and not being here for the full season, so on and so forth. Uh, but I still think I'm, I'm going to present them together because I think it makes a little bit more sense and I'll talk about them together, I guess. I am going to go with Precious Achua at the 7 and I'm going to go with Chris Boucher at the 6. Now, the reason I said it was a little weird is because Chris Boucher, I guess kind of similar to Goran Dragic, is a guy that I could potentially see being shipped at the deadline. I think Boucher is obviously a little bit older compared to some of the other guys on the team. Uh, his contract is obviously due to expire at the end of the season, and frankly, I think he is in for a decent raise, I think. And we saw it last season with Norman Powell where, you know, the Raptors aren't going to pony up for certain players. I would be interested to see if Boucher is one of the players that they would pony up for. But <laughs> this is my way of saying... I don't, there's, I don't think that he is, and based on that, I think there's a decent chance that he gets traded. Nonetheless, I do think I will have Boucher above Achua here. Obviously, Achua is the guy with plenty of potential. He is the player that you are hoping is going to grow into something, where he obviously came over from Miami in the sign and trade for Kyle Lowry, and he was kind of seen as like this raw prospect over there and since arriving in Toronto I mean don't get me wrong like he's still raw I guess but at the same time I think he's further along than most people thought he would be so with that being said why do I have Bushi higher 
Well, I think Boucher is going to be the sixth man for this team. And I think his role is going to be so prominent in the time that he's here that the potential concerns of him not finishing the season on the Raptors kind of outweigh that for me. And yeah, while I think both players are going to be impactful for the Raptors, yeah, push comes to shove. I'm taking that bet on Boucher being the more impactful one on this season. Number five is probably the biggest wild card on this team, and it is Gary Trent Jr. On one hand, there's times where you look at Gary Trent Jr. and you see, you know, somebody that could potentially grow into a really good shot creator for the team. Other times you look at Gary Trent Jr. and you see an inefficient volume score. It is really tough, I would say, to guess which one of these which one of those two directions he will go on a more regular basis, hence wildcard. <laughs> um and it's tough to rank him, it really is. Part of me wanted to rank him lower, um, just because being in, or just because in his time here, I think he's shown the inefficient volume score part a little bit more. And it is a little concerning. At the same time though, I do have a little bit of faith in him as a player and in terms of taking the steps with the core and with you know an added role it'll also be interesting to see what whether or not nick nurse favors him because i again preseason uh, not really uh the be all end all in terms of stakes but there were times where it seemed like nurse was favoring Dragic over trent jr so gary trent jr is a wild card to me and i but I feel like he's still obviously going to have a big enough impact and role for this team. Somewhat fittingly, the number four pick in this year's NBA draft is going to be the number four player in the power rankings here. I'm going to have Scotty Barnes take this spot. While I'm not a fan, obviously, as you can tell, of some of the overreactions that, I get, that I've seen in the preseason of Barnes. And so help me God... If I see one more Raptors fan compare him to Magic Johnson, I will genuinely lose my mind. And if you think I'm over-exaggerating, I am not. <laughs> uh, that being said, Barnes has looked promising out of the gate. In particular, I think his playmaking is something that really stands out and looks like a real positive. And something that I talked about, I'd say, earlier in the offseason is the fact that the team was felt like it was missing a little bit of playmaking. It now seems like Barnes can fill that role rather well. So I'm anticipating a reasonably sized role for the rookie uh, in spite of, I guess, the way Nick Nurse has treated rookies in the past. That being said, I think Barnes will be an exception here. I think he'll have a very good role with this team. And yeah, the numbers should be good. His impact should be good. He's obviously a great defender right out of the bat. There's so much to like about this kid. The top three is where it gets interesting, right? Because you kind of jump into the main core, the remnants of that Raptors championship team. And in my case, I guess somewhat flaming hot take territory. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a prelude, but at number three, I'm going to go Pascal Siakam. Yeah, Pas Pascal is at number three. So why Pascal at three? Well, I still think a lot of Pascal Siakam. I still think he is a very good player. I just think at this point, I have lost a little bit of faith and I don't want that to be spun the wrong way. I mean that in the sense that I think at this point, I don't see him better than just a really good number two on a potential championship level team, which is fine. Not everybody's gonna be that go-to, like, yeah, crazy, insane, number one. Uh, this is poor wordage, but you know what I mean. He should still be a good player. Obviously, he'll miss some time early on in the season with the injury, which kind of factored into potentially sliding him down a little bit more as well. But when he comes back, he should still have a very big impact on this team and the way it plays and, you know, whether or not they're good but I don't have him higher than three, and I will justify, somewhat, hopefully, why that's the case as I jump into two and one. Number two. Number two, I'm gonna go with Fred Van Vliet, which obviously lets you know who number one is, but I'll talk about that then. 
Uh, as far as Fred Van Vliet goes, I mean, Steady Freddy is the name, and this year I think that will really be the game. I know, phenomenal word, wordplay, thank you. <laughs> Steady Freddy is that guy that I think you just know what you can anticipate from him. I mean, obviously he has some off shooting nights and whatnot, but for the most part, you know what you're gonna get from Fred Van Vliet on a nightly basis. You know you're gonna get some great defensive play where he hounds people. You know you're gonna get you know a good dose of shooting, scoring, playmaking, and he's gonna be given the keys to this offense you know, now that Kyle Lowry's out the door. And I have him over Pascal just because I think he's somebody that's gonna be a, I guess, more regular positive for the team. Plus, obviously, you know, he's gonna play a little bit more than Pascal is because of the injury. For the most part, I think Freddie, similar to stretches of last season, will be the engine that kind of makes this team go. And with all that being said, that brings me to number one, and it is OG Ananobi. Now, as far as, I guess, hot takes go, this probably fits the bill where, you know, you're taking a guy like OG, who's a very good player, but obviously to this point, hasn't shown as much as a Pascal Siakam or a Fred Van Vliet. So why OG at number one? Well, first of all, I will preface this with I'm absolutely biased in this. Um, OG is my favorite player on the team, so I'm not going to pretend like there's no bias going into this pick. But <laughs> I do very genuinely expect a healthy jump from OG Ananobi this season yet again. We obviously saw it a lot. We've seen it every single year of OG that he's made strides in his game. With OG, it looks like his off the dribble game is really coming along. And I have said it time and time again on this channel, that is the biggest thing that he is in need of adding to his game. And once he does, he will take that next jump. And it seems, it seems like he's gonna have an off the dribble game this season with that anticipation do i think him jumping to like a 20 points per game score is a reasonable prediction yes and even fred van vliet talked about it where there was an interview where fred said until you know pascal siakam is back and in my opinion even when pascal siakam is back potentially og is the go-to guy in terms of scoring on this team I think that added experience and that early role for OG can really pay dividends to the continued growth. And genuinely, you combine the leap in his production in terms of, or at least in terms of what I'm anticipating to like a 20 plus points per game score with his all NBA defense that for two seasons now <laughs> has been overlooked and ignored by all defensive voters and I still cannot get over that. But nonetheless, you combine those two things and even that like small touch, I think of playmaking that he can incorporate into his game. I think OG genuinely has a chance to be the most important Raptor for this team. If he continues his growth and if we see him take another step forward to being a more regular and more, f I don't want to say focused, just a more regular go-to scoring option for this team, obviously with Pascal missing some time and with Fred Van Vliet slipping into potentially a more playmaking oriented role, he's going to get a lot of that burden. And if he can respond to that burden, there's no reason he wouldn't be the most impactful player on this team. So that does it for me. What do you folks think? <laughs> I know in terms of rankings, especially at the top, you know, anything that has rankings really uh, is going to elicit controversy and debate. And obviously with that controversy and debate, I want you to throw it all right into the comment section. Talk about it. Who do you think was a little too high on my list? Who do you think was potentially too low? Uh, am I overlooking anybody? Do you think... Uh, you know the drill. <laughs> you know the damn drill, okay? <laughs> comment, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Other than that, speaking of knowing the drill, I talked about it earlier, I'll say it again. Like the video, it makes a huge difference for the algorithm, and I really appreciate it when you folks do it. 
Speaking of things that I appreciate, subscribers, growing the channel is something that I obviously want to do. If you're on the fence, or if you're new here, don't be on the fence and don't be new anymore. Be a regular, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Other than that, that's really gonna do it for me today. I've got my thoughts out and I know I'm probably gonna hear it for the OG take in the comments, but I'm, but I'm ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that'll do it for me today. I will see everybody next time.